remarkable because it was one of the things that going into these talks that we weren't sure um, what the North Koreans were prepared to concede on. And that's definitely one that we've, uh, we weren't expecting. Uh, you know, one of the things that I do want to say here, though, is that everything so far that we've been hearing about what the North Koreans are willing to do has kind of largely come from South Korea. Just even today, the example of having President Moon make this announcement, uh, the, national, the, the, the intelligence officials in South Korea in Washington announcing that uh, Kim Jong-un had invited President Trump to meet. So we'll know a little bit more, I think, about just how serious North Korea is when President Moon sits down with Kim Jong-un next week at the DMZ. And, and tell us more also, Mr. Trump saying he will walk away from these talks midway if needs be. How will that go down in the region? You know, if he turns up, and I think it's actually getting harder and harder for him to walk away and to back out now because it does send a really negative signal to the world, to the region, and particularly to North Korea and to uh, to you know, to allies like China and Russia, that, uh, you know, all bets are off, really. Uh, but if he's willing to walk away in the middle of a meeting, then he can argue that, you know, he's come in good faith, he's done his due diligence, and he's realized that the North Koreans aren't serious. So it does give him a lot of leverage to be able to embark on whatever action he wants to take after that. But if he walks away before the meeting even happens, and it's also worth bearing in mind that Chinese President Xi Jinping is coming to Pyongyang and he wants to go uh, as soon as possible, um, most likely after a Trump-Kim summit, but the timing on that isn't sure. And there's also an invitation, uh, a, a sort of a request come out from the Kremlin that uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin also wants to go and meet with Kim in Pyongyang. So um, it, it, the optics of everyone going to see Kim and Donald Trump not, wouldn't, look, wouldn't reflect well on him. But it also, uh, just the ripple effect, the consequences of what that will do, what the Chinese could also say, you walked away, we've all been here, we've tried, we could ease sanctions now, it's been hurting our relationship with North Korea. And the North Koreans themselves, this, this, this would be a major snub uh, to Kim Jong-un, and he may respond uh, as he did all of last year, basically, with more missile tests. So with all of this, and there have been developments, remarkable developments throughout this year, um, is there still optimism that Mr. Trump can talk him out of his nukes in a real and verifiable way? Or is there still the scepticism as the meeting date gets closer? There, there is definitely scepticism from people who call what the North Koreans are doing right now a strategic pause, that they are, are choosing to... Uh, to, to put a pause on their nuclear program because uh, because now they're embarking what everyone's calling a charm offensive because it behooves them to do so because right up until this point they haven't had to give anything away so it'll be interesting to see what steps happen uh, after after the meeting yeah a bit topsy-turvy but let's see if it works Jamie Tarabay thanks so much